Hi, I'm Gavin, and welcome back to The Sound Project. Today we have uh, the pleasure of sitting down with Dave Ryder. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Um, Dave, uh, we'll get into what you do, but you've uh, meant just so much to me mm -hmm. over the last uh, uh, year and a half or so since I met you. Um, and Dave is with Ryder Leadership Solutions. And um, to give a little bit of background, one of my good close friends from high school, Nate Ross, uh, introduced me to you. And he had gone through this leadership group. Um, he's like, yeah, I go to Chicago once a month and it's something that has changed my life. Mm -hmm. And if Nate tells me something changed his life, then I am, uh, my ears perk up, you know? And uh, he, you know, he was just telling me his experience. He wasn't pitching it towards me at all. And yeah. then uh, after a while I started asking him like, hey, what is this all about? And how could I be involved in some way? Um, and he wasn't wrong. Like it does, it changes your life, what you do. And uh, it means a lot to me. So oh, thanks, that's um, really kind. Yeah, so maybe uh, tell the audience a little bit about what you do. Yeah, yeah. Um, largely, I just come alongside leaders like yourself. And um, there's a lot of folks that do what I do, but the distinctive is we're kind of interested in what's happening inside you. So yeah. we talk about the unseen operating systems of our lives. And yeah. so most leaders have never been trained on that. And that, that's what we do. We do that in a one-on-one -on -one situation. We do that in the group situation. You've experienced both a coaching construct and a group construct. And then uh, every now and then leaders invite us into their organization to help them cascade that down. And you know mm -hmm. that construct too. Yeah, yeah, that, that was something where I was in leadership group last year and I spent a, you know, once a month going up to Chicago and, and just coming home. I'd always tell people after group, I, um, I'm equally energized and just exhausted. Yeah, You know, it's like, I'm ready to like get better and to improve myself, but it's, it's a very emotional day. It's, it's packed with a lot of things. You're, you're, uh, um, processing a lot. Um, so, but I was doing that every month and then I would come home and tell everybody at work about what I experienced. I couldn't really explain it fully. Yeah. Um, however, I also felt in a strange way, a little guilty that I was the only one getting to experience it because it meant so much to me and it was like mm -hmm. really impacting my life in positive ways. And um, I was like, man, how can I make this happen for the team too? And so uh, once a month in Chicago is not in the cards for us, but I was like, man, if maybe you could come down yep. once a quarter. And so we started doing that um, about six months ago. Yeah, so. I do that with probably 20 to 30% of the folks I work with. So. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I could see that because like, yeah, once you get a little taste of it, you're just like, I want more of this. Well, in my see life. that 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 speaks to the heart of a leader mm -hmm. and wanting uh, their people to grow and wanting an organization to be healthy. Yeah. And uh, health is is one of the main conversations. Yeah, So yeah, no, it's, it's uh, so tell me a little bit about how you got into doing what you're doing. I know, the story. So it's a little bit of a softball question, but yeah, I, it, it's, it's good to know like where you came from and, and why this has been appealing to you. Yeah. I, I, I've been blessed with, I think five careers actually. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was in grad school, everyone said, you're going to have two. Well, I've had five. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I started out in uh, manufacturing. I worked for Motorola in the day and, um, uh, became fascinated that we could put really smart people in a corner conference room and we couldn't get the decisions out across the 13, uh, foot aisle yeah. to the floor. And like, what, what's up with this? What's up with change? And it, and it drew me into the leadership world. And so I, I made my first Hail Mary leap of my career out of the manufacturing operations where you're one of the folks that's participating and making those decisions to the world of HR. Yeah. Um, remarkably, I landed in a, a function that'll never exist in corporate America again. It was called the Center for Learning and Knowledge Management. Okay. Big fancy word. <laughs> what all that meant was we had a lot of people retiring and a lot of people knew stuff and we didn't know how to get that transferred to the up and coming next generation. And one of the major things that we learned is that knowledge, like real knowledge, not know what that can be written in a book, but know how is transferred best in the context of relationship. Mm -hmm. And so that led me into broader roles within HR. I spent some time in the world of executive development, uh, who's a VP, who gets to be a VP, who are the up and comers. And that was great. And um, I then went and made a big Hail Mary leap to break off on my own to do some traditional executive coaching. Yeah. And it was great. It was successful. It was roughly a 2008 uh, kind of window. And I had an old boss uh, I started to work with. And, and she says, hey, you want to do this 
contract. You want to come on full time? And I, I flippantly said, uh, make me an offer I can't refuse. And she did. And I'm like, what in the world? I just, I just spent two years trying to get out of corp and I'm going back in. Yeah. Well, for anyone that knows 2008, the market came apart yeah. uh, in October. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I felt very protected and so on. Well, that then began to lead me into a leadership experience that really put me out over the edge of my skis. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not want, like lots of people working for me, I'd had plenty of time doing that. Well, I slowly began to acquire more parts of the operation. I had over 300 people working for me in a highly politically charged uh, environment. And I started to get pushed. So yeah. I went looking for help. And so um, I went to see a counselor to kind of understand me, but he didn't understand leadership. Yeah. I went and got myself a big, fancy, expensive uh, Chicagoland coach who wanted to talk about the next 5,000 laps. And I'm like, dude, like, I'm out of alignment. Like, car's rattling. We're like, what do you got? Yeah. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. And I was wrestling trying to put the dots together. And... Um, I then came across a gentleman. I joined his leadership group, and he began to put some uh, core constructs together for me. Now, I'm a model guy. Uh, I love to draw constructs. been doing that for 30 years. And wow, this interior journey uh, mm-hmm. of a leader and how there aren't that many answers out there. And so that's really what I set out to do. Um, how does this work? How does this world work? Yeah, yeah. Um, and one thing I I've, I've, um, feel really blessed that I came across you when I did was that it was a time where our business was growing yeah. at a very fast pace. And I knew, like I thought, I, I'm, I'm a good boss. People uh, seem to, to like to work for me. But uh, at the same time, I'm like, if I just stay with the skills that I have right now, yeah. I'm not going to succeed. Yep. And I, I feel lucky that I met you when I did because you went through all of that of searching, finding this person, yes. finding that person, yes. it not showing you the whole picture. Um, and I got to avoid all that. I got to skip all the steps. <laughs> so that was that was very nice. I, or, or just embrace them in a way that you know what's happening, mm-hmm. right? So let's talk about that. That that moment when you said, uh-oh, who I am today is not gonna be what I need in the future. That, that kind of speaks to a moment in a leader's life where, you know, this is one of these unseen uh, operating systems. It's it's our leadership point of view, right? Mm-hmm. So we have a way we think the world works and, and any leader worth their salt can articulate their point of view. Mm-hmm. And it works. Because we wake up every morning in perfect agreement with ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> until it doesn't work. Right. And then, oh no, like what, what am I missing? And that's always in the confines of a leadership responsibility. So anxiety emerges <laughs> and we go looking for answers. And the question is, where, where do we find the answers? Right. Yeah. And uh, that definitely was the first year when I joined, you know, it, it's a little daunting to, to walk into a group. I mean, at least you know that everyone in the room has you know, similar interests and uh, a desire to get better and yeah. is will, a willingness to learn or else they wouldn't be there. Um, but still it's, it's walking into a room with a bunch of people you don't know. Yeah. I, I knew Nate cause he was still in the yep. group with, with you. But um, other than that, it was just brand new people that you need to open up and trust in order to get the most out of that experience. And so. Yeah, so let, let's talk about that for a second. Um, a lot of leadership is not learned in a book. It's learned through experience. And there, there's an old uh, saying that that leaders rise to their level of incompetency. <laughs> yeah. It, it's actually not true. We, we, we rise to the level of our pain tolerance. Mm, yeah. And so one, one of the kind of the secrets of, of executive development world is um, leaders plateau out because they stop learning and growing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So you had a choice to make when you hit that moment. Uh, this is too much. I'm going to park it. I'm going to, or I'm going to lean in. Mm-hmm. And that's what gets us to the next learning curve. That's what gets us to the next growth curve. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that, that those are the folks that we work with. And it, and it normally comes at you. It's not like you get to plan it and see it coming. Right. You know, it's not in your strat plan. It's not in your personal development plan. You just wake up one day and life demands more. Yeah. And you need a bigger, better you. Now, where are you going to go find a bigger, better you? That's in Chicago once a month. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> and no, it, it seriously is one of those things where... Um, the first year, because this is now my second year yeah. doing that, and the first year is, a lot of people describe it as like drinking from a fire hose. Yeah. You know, it's just like there's a lot of information and it's all really great information, but it comes at you pretty quickly. And some of the things that we learn in group is things that I'd never thought about before. Right. And uh, it's just like when you you read a chapter in a book and sometimes it's like, I need to read that again yes. in order to like have it fully sink in. Yeah. So this second year, I've noticed that... Um, 
I've actually been able to to sit there and and not feel lost. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. And and more like absorbing it. Well, and that that speaks to the learning that we have to do at different sections of ourselves, right? So, um, we're clear that some things I learn because we tell you. Mm-hmm. Now you got it. Yeah. There's other things I got the information, but it's not a part of me yet. Right. So how? I'm sorry, how, how does that work? How, do, how does that truth now become a part of who I am? How do I metabolize that mm-hmm. and make it a part of uh, my normal natural reality? Right, right. Yeah, and I, I, it's fun too, being in second year of group is that there's some people that's their first year. Right. And I know this the seat that they're yes. sitting in. And uh, it, it, there's been a few times this year that I've been able to help them along. And I could just see, like I was in that exact same position last year and just to see the growth that I've experienced from right. that point to now, um, man. Well, and it's really important to mark that because the higher you get in leadership, the harder it is to see fruit, mm-hmm. the harder it is to see that. Yeah. And so we need those moments to be get marked. Yeah. 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 So, it's good. Um, so I know one of the, the big things of uh, leadership group that you talk about is the iceberg. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that for a little bit? Yeah. Let's talk about why that iceberg matters first, though, if that's okay. Yeah, please. Um, so um, let's just talk about anxiety for a second. Um, it is uh, I, I, downright an epidemic right now. You know, yeah. we, we see it in younger people, but life is moving so fast. So much information is coming at us that we're, we're anxious. Now, I'm, I'm not a clinician. I'm not talking about a clinical definition of anxiety here. I'm talking yeah. about it from a leadership perspective. And um, what, what do you do with it? Right? And so an anxiety is a fear with no object. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I just wake up and I'm anxious. And so I go to work and I'm anxious. And so what do we do with this? Well, we got some work to do to go figure out what, what's the thing that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so for instance, if I'm going to go walking in the woods, but I'm anxious, mm-hmm. that's not very helpful. <laughs> yeah. Right. So um, one of the things I do for fun is I go hiking. And one of the things I do is I go out in the backwoods of Montana. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't go in the backwoods of Montana without some bear spray and possibly a gun strapped to your chest. Sure. Now, chance of running into grizzly bear really small, but if it were to happen, it's kind of a really big deal. Yeah. Okay, so fear. Well, what are we trying to do here? So if, if we start with anxiety and we're trying to get over to fear, at the far right-hand side is this thing called being, like, I mean, survive, like stay breathing. And then how do I go from surviving to thriving? Mm-hmm. Because as leaders, we want to reach our capacity. So what we're ultimately talking about is this capacity, Mm -hmm. okay? Now, that means I got to do something, which then means I need the courage to act. So I've got anxiety, I've got fear. Now, how do I I go over to courage so I can get to my capacity? Mm -hmm. And that really brings us to the iceberg. Yeah. Because you, your your interior journey, the totality of who you are. And so let me just give a quick rundown of that. Um, Iceberg, it's an overused metaphor, but it still works. Layer one is that above the waterline stuff. It's the place of skill acquisition. It's the place of getting stuff done. We're sitting here on a podcast right now. This yeah. is this is a layer one activity. Yeah. Um, but you and I actually know one another. Mm-hmm. So our two little icebergs have kind of gotten a closer. And here's what's true about that. Like, you know, layer two is this relational world. Yeah. And um, like, for instance, do you know how many leaders are actually competent at layer two in a relationship? You t- gave us a number once. It's a really small percentage. It, it, it's shocking. You know, we've, we've known about emotional intelligence now for 15 plus years, and it used to be 19%. Now it's 20. Hmm. A lot of progress there. <laughs> so our, our natural leadership orientation is to stay concentrated and focused on that layer one. But this layer two, this interpersonal, this relational, it's the beginning of the cultural experience. And it's, it's also who we are as individuals, because here's another scary statistic. Seventy percent of all senior leaders have nobody to talk to about things that matter most. Yeah, it's a lonely, it's a lonely position, right? Yeah, and the natural progression of leadership will lead you to isolation if you don't do something about that and fight that. And so this is this layer two, and here's what's fascinating about that: it begins to give us access to other centers of knowing that we have. And so when I'm when I'm in a group of leaders at this point in time in the conversation, I'll go. So here's what's fascinating: you guys already know stuff about me. I mean, I've only been talking to you for 15 minutes or so, but you know stuff about me. Like, you already know if you like me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not asking for commentary, right? Um, But you know if I'm approachable. You've already determined if I'm competent. How do you possibly know that? 15 minutes in, right. Okay, because it's a different center of knowing. 
Mm -hmm. See, and that center of knowing has been educated. It's been formed. Mm -hmm. It's part of your everyday makeup, but we don't talk about it. And that brings us to the, the third layer, which is this interior journey, which nobody gets to know your interior world. We call it deep water unless you share it. Yeah. And here's the funny thing. You don't get to go home, stare at your navel and figure this stuff out. Mm -mm. We've been wired as humans that this is a team sport. Yeah. That's why a group like you're a participate in Chicago is so much better than just simply talking to me. Like I, I can get you 65% of the way there in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but there's something very powerful about being in a group of people that are like-minded, like passion, serious about this kind of growth. And you get to learn as somebody else is talking because mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're reflecting on your own life and, and a part of that. Yeah. And so this iceberg is just a construct. It's yeah. just handles, right? Mm -hmm. So I met you two years ago, Yep. right? You've just come through some pretty fascinating moments yourself. It has, yeah. You, you've just celebrated 15 years. Yeah, 15 years for the business. That that was, uh, it, and it goes by like this, you know? Right. And, and But it also feels like it's logarithmic and it's accelerating uh, in the last, you know, five years more than it did in the first 10. Correct. It's coming at me pretty fast. And so. yet here's, here's what's fascinating. Some really cool things happened for you, right? Yeah. And so all we've done is I, I just... I just gave you a construct to understand that. You, you've been working mm -hmm. to all those beautiful, wonderful things a long time ago. You, you might've just done it from a center of knowing you didn't have access to. Sure. We, we just bring that to light so that you can continue to do that because it is going logarithmic. Mm -hmm. It is. It feels that way too. Uh, well, th <laughs> this is the way growth happens. Yeah. Growth doesn't go on a nice 45 degree pitch up. It goes, uh, and then it just a step function. Right, right. And those are destabilizing, bringing lots of anxiety. Yep to people. And so here's what's funny about the iceberg. You know, we got a lot of pictures of leadership, people with backpacks, climbing mountains and putting a flag on the top of an iceberg. That is not where courage sits. Yeah. Courage sits at the bottom of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. That's when we go anyway. Right. With all of the nervousness and all of the, the feelings they've got and the unknowing. And so those are the capacities. Those are the types of things that we have to wrestle with as leaders because we live in a world where leaders say, well, you're supposed to know, right? You're supposed to have perfect clarity. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it doesn't always go that way. So how do I lead from here? Those are the kinds of things that we, we work on. Yeah. And I, one thing that when I go to Chicago and we have a group, one of the big things that, that comes out of it is just a, a new awareness yes. uh, of things that I just, going into yep. it, I was blind to, like a blind spot of some sort. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is a thing. Um, and being able to just sit with it for a second and then realize like it's got the whole name it to tame it thing. Like, what is this? Yes. What is going on with me with when it comes to this topic? And as soon as you put your attention to it, then you can do something about it. But if it's off your radar, you, you're just going to keep living that way. Yeah. Well, awareness, this is one of the unseen operating systems that we have because as humans, we're creatures of awareness. Mm -hmm. we, we get to put our awareness anywhere we want. Mm -hmm. Like right now, we, we could ask, hey, what's going on in Washington, D.C.? What's going on in downtown Indy? What's happening in this room right now? Mm -hmm. What's happening with me? What's happening with you? And because if we're aware, I get to pay attention. Mm -hmm. If I'm paying attention, I get to notice. Mm -hmm. If I notice, I get to make some decisions about that, whether I like it, whether this is good, whether this is bad, and I get to turn that into to key leadership decisions. And so yeah. becoming aware of your own awareness yeah. is that that's a capability, that's a system. Now, what do we need to be aware of? This is where we get into the layers of the iceberg because each of these layers is a different kind of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you have access to that kind of knowledge, it gives you access to a different kind of life. I mean, how many leaders do you know that are just stuck in the top of the iceberg and they do perform, 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 and they don't yeah. know connection at work. They don't know what it means to be a part of a connected team. Right. Yeah, that, to me, I tell people all the time that if, if, Nate would have told me, hey, I'm, I'm doing this leadership group. It's more like a, a networking event. And it's like, it's also we learn do X, expect Y. Uh -huh. um, I would have been not interested at all. Like, I, at least I knew enough at that point. Yes. That, like, that is not the way I want to learn about things. Um, because to me, running this business, like it's way more important for me to, yeah, we need to do a good job. We yep. need to... to uh, help our customers out. Um, however, it's way more important for me to just create an environment for everyone that works here uh, to really enjoy their life. And I'm not talking about at work. I'm talking about everything that happens here. 
every every one of my employees is going home to somebody there. Yes, you know, and and other people in their lives, and how it impacts people because there's there's too many people out there that do a job every day and yes. then they go home and it then just filters out into the rest of their world and that negativity or anything else can, can well, affect everything. An, an, another not good statistic, seven out of eight people go home every Friday believing that work doesn't really care about them. Wow. All you got to do is look at engagement survey data. You know, this is an HR thing that we do. We survey an organization. How do you like working here? Those types mm -hmm. of things. Because we, we have an ecosystem in our corporate life and our work life that is utterly selfish. Mm -hmm. And so not every leader has an orientation like yourself. Yeah. And, and what's fascinating about that is, is like, let's ask the question, where's performance come from? And, and it's really interesting. You're in a group of leaders and you ask that question, they all stare back at you like it's a trick question. It's like, mm -hmm. no, I'm, I'm serious. Where does performance come from? It comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? There's a proverb, uh, right? Above all else, guard your heart for it's the source of everything you do. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you, you just you just articulated a frame of reference that you had that, yeah, I've got this business and yeah, I've got to be profitable, but there's more going on here than that. Mm -hmm. That's awareness. Yeah. That's leadership point of view because people go home. Yeah. Do we want healthy families? We do. Mm -hmm. And they have an influence in their community. Do we want healthy communities? See, when I went to grad school, we talked about that. Where's that conversation today? Yeah. You and to do that, we need we need healthy organizations that help contribute to healthy people, that contribute to mm -hmm. healthy families, help the uh, schools, help the everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something where, like I said, that's why I wanted to bring you in quarterly to our team yeah. because uh, it's funny. We do a, a thing at the beginning of every year where we we set some goals for the year, things that we're shooting for. And I, I told you about this already, but um, we do this thing called an ICE score, which is. Uh, impact, confidence, and effort. Yeah. And is, there's an equation for it, and then you can actually nice rank analytical. Your, yeah, yeah. Rank rank your goals and uh, uh, figure out like what's going to be have the most impact, and uh, but also ease of of implementing it. And we did that this year in, in January. Um, and having you come in hmm. once a quarter got the highest score. And and really, and that was with them not even having much of an introduction to you. Yeah. you. You spent like maybe an hour with them one time when you were in town, but um, everybody, I think probably from me coming back every month, talking about this thing that I'm yeah. doing in Chicago. Um, and everybody, I think internally, everybody wants to improve and be better and grow. And um, so I don't know, it's a they, testament to what you do. Well, th thank you for that. But I think it, it speaks to the hunger. Mm-hmm. It, it speaks to the longing. Uh, yes, people want to have good work, but they want to belong. Yeah, they, they want to be a part of something then larger than just their work or their labor, and and this is actually the work of of leadership. Um, and so we have an axiom in the work that we do. Uh, it's going to sound like leadership blasphemy. It is, and done on purpose. And that is, leaders don't drive results. Right. And. Like we've all lied on our resumes because mm -hmm. we want to say, looky what I did. Yeah. Right. And we don't, we steward an environment that produces fruit. It's an agrarian metaphor. I remember you asking us in one of the early uh, meetings is like, do you make your grass grow? Right. <laughs> right. Everyone's like, oh yeah, I do. I water it uh -huh. and I, I uh, fertilize it and right. I mow it and I right. take care of it. Right. And there is a source of all growth. That would be, that would be God. That'd be layer four and five of the iceberg. Right. But do we, do we live our lives that way? Do we live our lives in alignment with, with reality? Mm -hmm. And that's really what we do. It's like, okay, what's the D1 reality? I mean, everyone's got D1 problems. Yeah. And there are solutions to D1 problems, and we can go work on fix those. Mm -hmm. Well, but there's some D2 problems, right? So for every one of uh, the folks listening to this, just imagine the next meeting you walk into. I want you to ask why you're there. Now, unless you're in a strat meeting, this is because there's a problem. Mm -hmm. So the D1 problem in the middle of the room is the thing that ain't getting done. Right. Okay. But why are you there? Because <laughs> you have a team. But you're there because things ain't getting done. Okay. There are D1 problems, clarity, alignment, resource allocation, mm -hmm. et cetera. But I want you to look around the room and go, what's going on in this room that this thing is like here? Yeah. And you're going to find some things. You're going to find, you know, Larry and Susie are not getting along in this meeting because they got a thing going on between them. Mm -hmm. That'd be a relationship problem. Yeah. Um, then I want you to look at every chair in the room and go, 
Why is Bill over there just sitting back? He tried saying a couple things. No one listened to him, and now he's withdrawing, and he's backing out of his chair. Yeah. See, these are D3 issues. And here, here's the challenge. When we have problems at D2 and D3, they're not a fix-it mentality. You can't fix it. Mm -hmm. It's a healing metaphor. Right. So every leader asks me, so how, how, how long is this going to take? Right. How long is it going to take? <laughs> yeah, I, it's a lifelong journey. Well, it is. But if I broke my leg today and I go into the hospital, I'm 60 years old. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to tell me six to 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, what if mine takes 14? Mm -hmm. I don't know. All I can do is support the healing process, but I can't make it heal faster. Right. I can mess it up, <laughs> but I can't make it heal faster. And, and bringing the right approach and the right solutions and the right paradigms to those layers really matters. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, – it's funny because going into it, I think that maybe I had some of those concepts in my mind, but I couldn't define it as well as, mm -hmm. as you yeah. have done it. Um, and then, yeah, just bringing that awareness to it. And then one of the things I, I love about group two, um, I mean, no one, you, you think giving yourself homework sounds like a horrible thing, um, but in this context, it's awesome. It's like at the end of every group, after everything we've processed through the, through the day, uh, you give yourself, you know, three to five things yeah. that you want to work on for the next month. And then, you have accountability partners for that. Like you have other Correct. people in the group that you talk to and like, oh, hey, how, how are you working on this thing? And and uh, that's been great because it's, a, again, just like putting my awareness on things. Yes. And there's been things come out of my homework uh, over the last year and a half that's changed my life. Hmm. Like just just because I, I'm actively participating in my growth. You became aware, mm -hmm. you put your attention on it, you put your focus on it, and you got support to go along with that. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, let me just back up a second. Like, how do you learn to ride a bike, right? Could I give you a manual big enough that <laughs> you would know how to ride a bike after you've processed this manual? No. Right. You got to hop on and pedal. Yeah. Well, I, I love teaching my kids to ride a bike, but as soon as you let go of that back seat, 10 feet later, what, what happens? Yeah. You crash. They dump the bike. Mm -hmm. Now, what do they need at that moment, right? They might need to come over to mom and dad and get a little comfort. Yeah. So they can get back on the bike. But we have to learn to paddle. Well, leadership is the same thing. Mm -hmm. How do you learn to be a leader? Yeah. Experience. Mm -hmm. How do you get experience? By falling off your bike. Right. Now, where's the back parking lot for leadership growth like that? Because leaders are learning in the wide open front view of the world. Right. So how do we create some leadership environments some learning environments with the right people in the room for us to have those kinds of conversations and some back parking lot experiences so we can get a practice run at that? Yeah. And then we got to come home and show everybody we know how to ride our bike. Right. Right. But it goes like that, but that's painful. And the, and the more responsibility you get and the higher you get in leadership, you got more at stake. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the challenge. Like our world is changing so fast, right? Like when you think about all the things that you do, how much change have you seen in a year? Like put a percent on it. Oh. Like you personally, like I walk in the door and I worry about a different pile of things than I used to worry about. Oh yeah, it's like 30, 40%. Right, <laughs> yeah. and, and that, is, that is my consistent experience and number now for what, eight to 10 years. Mm -hmm. Well, that means next year is gonna have new fresh challenges that you may have never experienced before. Yeah, that's one thing I, I've been talking with my team recently is that, um, all I know is that however I predict this business is going to grow, right? I'll be wrong, you know? Correct. Because uh, it, it's, uh, you know, I don't know if it's low expectations or just being naive about certain things, but I'll a lot of times say like, there's no way we're going to do that again. Like, um, but it happens every year. Well, and, and, and that comes to, we all make these goals and we make a nice pretty chart with a goal line from zero to some number at the end and it's a nice clean line. Mm -hmm. And our actual never follows that. Mm -mm. We're doing better than we thought, but we can't explain why. And then we're doing worse than we thought and can't explain why. Yeah. But on average, we, we kind of get there. But what do we do when we're, we're below the line? Right. Yeah. You see, and so sometimes like every leader is going to make mistakes. It's not the issue that you make a mistake. It's right. what you do after you make a mistake that matters. Right. And so you're either going to move into learning about that, mm -hmm. exploring that, look at how you contributed to that, mm -hmm. which is going to get personal. Yeah. And we're either going to acknowledge and, and own that or we're not. Yeah. And if we don't, then what you got is what you get. Yeah. And, th and that's one of the challenges is this teachability. Like, you know, one of the, one of the first criteria for capacity is learning agility. Mm -hmm. 
And all that means is I'm going to take everything I know and I'm going to bring it to the table and I'm going to lean in and I'm going to go figure it out. Yeah. Well, when you're into something new, you might get a little pain to come with that. Mm-hmm. Performance isn't going to be what you're used to. When you're when you're great at what you do and you got to go try something new, it's 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 an emotionally challenging thing to do because you're not going to be great at this thing. Yeah. And I actually uh, I think about the timing of me starting this was couldn't have been better um, because I was getting to the point you, you mentioned saying being out over your skis. Like, yes, that's where I was. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it, it's it's all falls in the category of the good problems to have that that people say. Doesn't that annoy you? Yeah, like, right. Seriously, that doesn't make me feel better tomorrow. <laughs> right, <laughs> but it's like I was starting to to get to that point, adding employees, growing uh, uh, this business. And I'm just glad that I found something that I could process that because, again, the D1 thing, that's that's easy, honestly, in comparison to the D2 and D3 uh, part of things. But those D2 but and just, D3 just park is, there for a second. Yeah. We, we've just established that statistically. Now, I, we, we do a 360 review. Um, it, statistically, 20% mm-hmm. are, are not emotionally intelligent. Right. Or, or, or they are emotionally. That means 80 aren't. Yeah. So you just said something profound. Mm-hmm. D one is the easy part. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people listening to this want to know what in the blazes you just said because that's like offensive. Yes, I guess that's true. And yet you're actually right. Um, like your people when when leaders go through leadership transitions, right? Like so, when you first started, you're good at what you do. Mm-hmm. You so what you're so good at what you did. You started a business, and then you hired your first employee but you're still doing what you're doing. You still have your hand on all the stuff that made you good. Mm-hmm. Well, one day you had to let go of some stuff that you did. That, that's, that's a pretty significant transition because you got to trust somebody else is going to get that job done. Now, what's the chance they're going to do it as good as you? I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't want to put a percentage on that. Uh, well, <laughs> not high. Yeah. And, and this is why when we talk about delegating, if they can do it 75% as good as you, you hand it off. Okay. Well, we keep going through these leadership transitions and now all of a sudden I'm, I'm handing something like significant, mm-hmm. okay? But it also means you got to let go of the front line. Yeah. And that's a grieving process because you, you got in this business because you like what you do. Yeah, yeah. And you got to let go of it, mm-hmm. which means you ain't going to do it no more. Right. So you get to wake up one day and go, I'm sorry, what's my job? <laughs> what do I do? You get at the end of the day and go, I, I don't know what I did today. Yeah. I used to know what I did, but what do I do now? Yeah. And this, this creates a whole interior dialogue for sure. that we have to go content with. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was, I mean, for 10, no, not 10 years, maybe eight to nine years, I did every single step of the business by myself. I didn't have any employees. And, right. Um, and then slowly as, as people have come on board, yeah, I'm, I'm giving away things. And a lot of times the things I'm giving away are the things that fill my cup. Right. Right. It's the things that I enjoy doing. Um, However, it's because there's other things that I need to take care of. Um, and I, I realize that I'm uniquely qualified to do those other things. And so I still need to keep doing those things. But, um, but yeah, you miss, you miss parts of it. And that's all part of change and change, even when it's positive. The business is growing. This is wonderful. There, and there's awesome things to talk about. But there's also some negative things about that. And the leader's ability to incorporate both the good and the hard at the same time is one of these capacities that, yeah. that we have to grow and develop in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been, um, Nate was not wrong. It's been life changing for me. Like, uh, I mean, there's some of the things that I've had, like I said, just out of homework items that literally, if I wasn't going through that group, I would just be stuck doing the same thing that I always was doing because that's what worked before, Uh, which it really didn't. And, and here's what's fascinating. If someone doesn't reach, like we, we all have an ecosystem and it stops working. So what we do is we double down on what worked before. <laughs> yeah. And it stopped. It's not working, but we try it again. Yeah. And sooner or later, we got to crack that system open, and that's called vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And we invite somebody into that world to go, uh, I'm not really figuring this thing out. Mm-hmm. A- and vulnerability is hard, particularly for a senior leader, because so many people want things from them. It's really hard to find safe people. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, this is one of the major challenges. And so how do people find their people? Yeah. Yeah. That they can trust with some of the more sensitive things of, Mm -hmm. of life. Um, and you know, these, this is why we create that, that group ecosystem. We're very selective of who uh, joins uh, a group. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, 
to give you a taste. And once you have a taste, you're like, okay, now I'm going to go find this at home. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Go, go build your life team. We call it a life team because yeah. that's what we need to be able to continue to have these kinds of conversations because the inter interior narrative is what's really driving the boss. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely is. I, and one of the things that there's, you know, uh, let's see, two, two additional guys this year in the group that were in last year's group. And so we have already built a relationship right. and then we have new, new people in the group as well. But, um, it was so interesting to me in the first meeting that we had this time, um, I, there's a thing called work group where, you know, people can just, uh, bring their business problems to this table. And yep. you have a bunch of people who have all these life experiences and their leaders as well. And you get to spill that out there and just get their, their feedback right. and, and their advice. And I think that that's super valuable. In the first group this year, um, I started talking about, um, yeah, I need, I need to get an executive assistant. I think, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Like people have been telling me right. like, Hey, you should get some help for yourself. And I'm always one to, um, I like to hire to make other people on my team, their lives easier yeah. uh, rather than my own. I'm like, I'll, I'll just keep grinding it out. And, you know, I've got two small kids and uh, they're only young once. And right now I was just caught in this loop of, man, from 9.30 to one in the morning, that's when I do emails. Cause 9.30 to 1.30. Yeah, yeah. It's like, because I'm on video calls all day and right. I'm, I'm working on stuff uh, and the it, it's emails- It's the time you got. It's what I got. And, but because of that, I'd be at home and in the back of my mind, uh, I got to answer those emails. Correct. And so I'm not as present with my kids, not as present with my wife. And, um, but in this first group, I'm talking about like, yeah, pe people have been telling me for probably five years I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And I just never did it. And so I thought I was innocent work group. I thought like, oh, I'm just going to spell this thing out. And immediately, because I have a relationship with you and other people in right. the group, it got pegged pretty quickly that this is more of a D3 issue mm -hmm. and that I felt like I didn't deserve an assistant, mm -hmm. you know? And so that was, um, it, it, I, I didn't, I don't even think I got the advice. I mean, definitely people just said like, Hey, yeah, you need to right. go do it. But it was more so like processing. Yeah, you actually do deserve this and you should do it tomorrow. And it became my homework. And I think by the next <laughs> group, uh, we had hired Paige, right. uh, who's my assistant. And it's like, literally in a month has been life-changing. Yes. Um, and that sort of thing wouldn't happen if you didn't do what you did. Yeah. And, and uh, you mentioned stuck. Mm -hmm. We're all stuck or stalled somewhere. Yeah. And we need some people around us to actually speak truth to us like that. It, can it, Dude, it was like shockingly obvious to us. Not yeah. obvious to you. Right. And there's things in my life that are obvious to my friends, not obvious to me. Mm -hmm. Because we, we, we don't get to go home and stare at our own navel and figure it out. And yeah. th those places of stuck are not only keeping us from our uh, full capacity and potential, they're actually creating so much sideways energy. You're 9.30 to 1.30, mm -hmm. lack of sleep, et cetera, et cetera, availability to friends and other aspects of life. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we get unstuck? Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to go do some work. Mm -hmm. And this is back to anxieties and fears. And, and a lot of people can't make decisions like that because they're scared of something. Yeah. I don't wanna let go. Yeah. I'm actually scared to grow. There's a lot of leaders actually scared of success. They've that. never thought that thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll tell me all the reasons that our things are in the way. And it's like, well, what would happen if it actually worked? Game goes up. Yeah. More pressure. Right. How, how do we learn to wear that backpack? Yeah. Th th those are all interior kinds of things that we have to talk about to get ready for it. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's something that having that support system with what you do and everybody in the group, it's like, I mean, we're on it. A path right now where it's just like, what I don't want to do is lose who we are in the success. Yes. You know, it's like a lot of really good things are happening. And, um, you know, we just had, you mentioned the 15 year yeah. and, um, uh, the, you know, the, we, we actually, um, had this video that, that the team put together of all these past people, you were on it uh -huh. as well. And it's one of those things where almost everybody mentioned on that, um, man, it's not just what you guys do, it's who you are while you're doing it. Right. And that's what I don't want to lose in this growth. It's like, and I don't know how to, how to retain that except just being who we are and-, and uh, But see, this is, this is the fascinating part. You're unconsciously competent. Mm -hmm. You don't know the levers that you're actually pulling, but you're pulling them and you're pulling them well. Hence, you just had this beautiful moment where your team produced a video for you. Yeah. Yeah. And you have the phrase, I don't want to lose who we are. Yeah. 
that's actually D3, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what's actually producing the D1. And so all we're talking about is bringing some constructs to those things that we know. And then once we're aware of them, not, oh, yeah. now I can go pay attention to that. Yeah. But what a beautiful thing, yeah. friend. It was cool. Right? And mm -hmm. so I've only known you for two years, and I know you like to, to, to throw things my way, but mm -hmm. you've been building that culture since the day you started. Yeah. You might not have known it, but this is fruit. Yeah. Yeah. This I'd, is the fruit of a trajectory. And if, if honestly, if I've contributed something, I've just given a few handles to understand what you're already working on. Yeah, that's that's downplaying it. Well, but, I'm just saying. But yes, I, you know, probably just maybe, I don't know, it was four years ago that we just defined our core values. I mean, the podcast we're on called The Sound Project, yeah. and that's our core values is an acronym for sound. And it's like, I just never did it before because it was mostly just me and who I was. And I'm I, in perfect agreement with myself today, exactly. but now I got to get this out in the organization. Yeah, How's that work? It's got to be out there. But um, I don't know. I just, uh, I love the fact that, um, man, yeah, we could, we could only focus on uh, D1 stuff all day long. And then that would lead to burnout and people not feeling like they're part of something bigger than themselves um, and not have the relationships that we do around here. Cause it, it's cliche, but like literally everybody here feels like family. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, uh, it's being conscious of that and uh, knowing what's important and not yes. getting sidetracked by other things that success can bring. Yes. You know, um, not applicable to you, but anyone else that might be be listening, that's the positive side. But when we go performance only, D1 only, mm -hmm. we're hurting people. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Seven out of eight people go home every Friday and they're not sure that anyone at work cares. I mean, this is not good for the human soul. This is not good for any part of society, let alone your own organization. So, um, at best, you're getting someone's labor. Yeah. And wouldn't it be better if we created an ecosystem where people could thrive, that people could actually learn and grow and become the best version of themselves in the context of your organization? Yeah. How do we do that? Yeah. And that's that's this ecosystem. This is culture. This, this is why culture projects fail in most corporations. Yeah. Um, here's another axiom. Um, there's no such thing as organizational change. <laughs> right. Only people change and they do that one at a time. We, we, I mean, I come from large organization. I actually have spent time in the function of HR that drives large scale organizational change. And I'm here to tell you it doesn't work. Yeah. Because it's individuals. Mm -hmm. it's, it's names and faces. It's moms and dads and grandma yeah. and grandpa mm -hmm. who work for you that go home and are just loved. Well, why can't they be that at, at work? All right. They can. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and so that this is this is what we're trying to poke at. Yeah. Well, I uh, I've often joked about like not joked, but I say that the the phrase that anytime you're in the room with me, something good is going to happen, and it's not because of me, but it's because of what you bring to it, and um, I just appreciate you so much and what you've done for for me, my life, my my family, and my business. Yeah. You know? uh, so. Dude, it's been a it's been wonderful journeying with you. And that's, yeah. that's really, honestly, that's all I think I do. I, I come alongside, I journey yeah. with, and we'll deal with whatever comes up, whether that's a org thing, a relationship thing, yeah. a deep water thing. And so it's, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. I appreciate you, Dave. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. So that's been another episode of The Sound Project. Really appreciate you being a part of it. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>